Hi everyone, it's Kelly from Kelly's Bead Boutique. So I've been making and teaching how to make jewelry for a very long time. And one of the comments that I always hear is, you make it look so easy. Well, I think it is. And I wanna show you just how easy it can be. So I'm gonna take some simple parts and some simple techniques and put them together and teach you how to make your very own jewelry. If you wanna see what I'm making today, come and join me. Okay, so to make our piece today, I have some chain. I also have a lobster clasp and a jump ring and this beautiful decorative barrel bead. I have some clamshells, a bale, one of these beautiful rhinestone spacers, another little spacer, a tassel, this uh, connector that's made with glass, and then I have some four by six Chinese crystal. I have some Eslon, and we'll be using some 22 gauge titanium colored wire. And for tools, I'm going to probably use a pair of tweezers. I like to keep them on hand for what I'm about to do. I also have our four basic tools. So I have our chain nose pliers, our bent chain nose pliers, our round nose pliers, and our cutters. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut myself some wire. And we're using our 22 gauge craft wire here today. Now on this piece, what we're trying to do is create something a little unconventional. We need this to cover over top of the um, this part of the tassel, but I don't want any bulk on the top. So we're going to do sort of an unscientific way of attaching this. You know, I'm normally, you know, all about the wrapped loops, but on this one, we need to create it as tight as possible. So all I'm going to do is put just a little bit, maybe an inch through there, and I'm going to just sort of bend it up. Now I find that you kind of have to, you know, this is a bit of a MacGyvering sort of thing. So now I'm going to take my wire and push it through. So the first thing I've done is create that sort of loop through there and then I'm going to bend it through and you're never going to see this. So if it gets a little mucky looking, don't worry about it. What you want to try and achieve is to have this nice and snug around this loop here. So you can see I'm pulling it tight. It's nice and snug on both sides and I'm just going to do it one more time. I just want to make sure that this is attached nicely but it does not have to look any certain way. I just don't want to have any of my loops on top of each other because even just a little tiny bit can throw this thing off a bit and make it so that it doesn't go together. All right, so that's exactly what we want. So now I'm just going to trim this off and you don't have to worry about tucking any burrs in or anything like that because it doesn't really matter. So now I'm just going to reposition my wire so it's more or less in the center of that tassel. So you can see now that's exactly what we want. Just a nice little uh, wrapped up uh, area there. So now I'm going to build my tassel. So I'm going to put on my hammered disc here and I'm going to put on my spacer and my little um, spacer there. And then you just sort of seat them down and look how cute that looks. That covers up the business end of the tassel, which I'm not really a fan of. Um, and it creates a nice little sparkle. And then by adding that uh, black oxide spacer on the top, it just kind of pulls it all together. And I really love how that looks. So I'm just gonna bend away and I'm gonna take my round nose pliers and I'm gonna go up and over and down and I'm gonna rotate my pliers so they're parallel to the table. Pull that straight to the back and then I am going to attach it directly to my little glass piece. So always remember to attach things before you wrap them up. It's very easy to get excited and move forward and then not have it attached. And so now we're just gonna wrap down a couple times until it sort of gets nice and snug there. And then I'm gonna work my way back up, creating that sort of messy, bulky wrap. I know mine are very, not very messy usually, but I do like the sort of double bulkiness of it. And now we're gonna use the flush side of the cutter and come in and just trim that off. And now I'm gonna to look to see if there's any burrs that need to be tucked down. And that one only needs just a little bit. So now that's created a really nice little focal point. So you might have to do some tweaking. So sometimes I just come in and, and pull that up a bit and just sort of assess it and see what you need to do. But that's basically what we're going for. Now we're going to continue with the necklace. So I'm going to cut myself about 24 inches or so of this Eslon. We'll be sure to give you enough of it in your kit. 
Okay, so now I'm going to take my Eslon, and I'm, I don't know if I mentioned it at the beginning, I think I actually forgot that we're going to give you uh, one of these collapsible eye needles in your kit. The nice thing about this is that when you're going to double this up, which is what we're going to be doing today, it makes it so much easier to try and get through those holes. So we're just going to put one end through there, and then I'm going to match that up and pull that needle right down to the end. And you can use these over and over and over again, so it's great. So all I'm going to do now is I am going to put uh, my beads on. So I'm going to put on, I believe it's 19 beads on one side. And then I'm going to be putting on my bail. And then I'm going to put on another 19. So I'm going to just continue along here for until I get to the 19 beads on here. And then I'll show you what it looks like. So now I have my 19 on there. Now if you come to this part where you, you're finding it hard to pull these down, you can just take the end of your pliers and put them on the end of the um, needle and then you can kind of pull that down. But you see most of the time they just slip right on there. Okay, so let me just get this out of the way. So now we've got 19 beads on there. I am going to take my black oxide bail and put that on and then I'm going to put on my other 19 beads. So you don't need to watch me putting on 19 beads so I'm just going to fire these on and then I'll be right back. Alright so I have my 19 beads and then my bail and then my other 19 beads. So I'm just going to take my cutters and cut my eslon in half and then you can save your needle for another time. So the first thing I want to do before I go any further is I want to put on my little bead tip. So you'll see that this has a hole in the bottom and then they kind of open up like that. So I want to make sure that it's opening up this way and I'm going to take two strands of this and run it through. And if you find it really difficult to get in there, uh, you can put um, your needle back on and I probably should have done that to make life a whole lot easier. But if you kind of just roll it in there, it should, should go in there no problem. Okay, so I have my bead tip on there and it doesn't really matter where it sits. You just want to make sure that you've got enough uh, length on the other end so that you can um, wrap that up too. Okay, so on one end we're going to do a simple knot. So I'm just going to go over my fingers and pull those through and tighten that up. And I want to make sure it's nice and snug. And then I'm going to repeat because I want another knot right on top of that. So before I tighten it up, I'm going to sort of jockey it into place and pull that nice and snug. So sometimes you have to pull one versus the other. So I just kind of take one and then the other and then I pull nice and snug. And I want that really tight because I want a large knot but I don't want it so large that it won't fit inside this bead tip. So now I'm going to trim this off and I would recommend taking a little bit of GS Hypo glue and putting it on that knot and then letting this uh, dry. I just forgot to bring some today, so I don't have any. But um, just make sure that it's you know nice and secure. And then you can just close it with your fingers, or you can use your pliers and kind of push, but you don't want to push so hard that you flatten that out. The main thing is to make sure that those two uh, little loops are right on top of each other, otherwise it makes it very, very difficult to get your jump rings through. So now we're going to repeat on the other end. So always make sure to put your bead tip on before you move forward. I have done it many times where I've done my nice knots and then realized I don't have any um, bead tip on there. So now I'm going to just push that down towards my beads and this is where our pair of tweezers are, are going to come in handy. So I'm going to do a knot over my fingers, make a loop, and now I'm going to take my tweezers and I'm going to put it through, I want to make sure you can see this, so I'm going to put it through that hole and then I'm going to take the end of the tweezers and place it right where I want my knot to be. So I want my knot to be inside that little bead tip. So you can see that it sort of would be inside there. So I'm going to take the end here and pull up. And I want to make sure that they're not getting caught up on the outside of that, which that one is. So just kind of pop it up. Just make sure it's inside. And then you tighten that up. So by tight, the way I tighten it up is I take my tweezers and I run it down and pull nice and snug. And now it's the second one that can be a little bit challenging. So I'm going to go around my fingers, pull that through, go through that loop, and now I'm going to place the tip of my uh, tweezers right on top of that first knot that we made. So get a good strong grip on that and then pull tight until it goes right on top there. 
you want to pull really snug and then pop that out and run it down the length of the Eslon and pull really tight. And that should make a small enough knot that it should go right inside. So again, we're going to do a little trimming. And you want to get nice and close. And then this is where you would put a little dab of glue. Always let it dry before you close up anything. So we would let that dry. And then I'm going to tuck that down inside there. And then I'm going to close that up. So and again, I want to make sure you can see that one's just off center a little bit. So I just want to move that over so that those two loops are right next to each other. All right, so I have uh, two lengths of chain. So we're going to give you a length of chain. I'm not exactly sure how long this was, but all you're going to do is just cut it in half. So you're going to have one of these little um, sections here and you're just going to cut in between to give you two sections that are equal. And then we're going to take one of our jump rings I'm just going to move some of these tools here and I'm going to put my pliers on one side and put the other on the other side and I'm going to take my tassel and I'm going to go through the end of the bale and then tighten that up and then now I'm going to attach my chain I'm going to go through the end of one of those bead tips and sometimes if they're not um, exactly even it can be a little challenging so you just kind of I find it easier to do it with my fingers than a pair of pliers and do that up and now in this end we're going to take another one of our small jump rings open that up and put it through the very end of the chain and we're going to add our lobster clasp so now I'm going to add the other side of the chain. So I'm going to open up another jump ring, run it through the end of my bead tip, and pick an end of my chain, and then do that up nice and tight. So normally I would put a closed ring on the end there, but on this one it has a nice big ring on the end, so it makes it really easy to do up. So I'm just going to show you how beautiful this necklace is. So there you go. There's the necklace completed. I absolutely love this one. It adds just that little bit of sparkle. I think this one would be great for casual wear or for maybe a little bit dressy. I think you could just wear this with anything. So I hope that you enjoyed this one as much as I did. It was really fun to put together. It was a little more challenging doing something like, like this on the end, but I think it turned out so nicely. So if you did enjoy this one, please make sure to give me a like, leave me a comment, and please make sure to subscribe to my channel. This will be available in kit form, and to access the kits, you just go into the drop-down menu below this video, and there'll be a link that will take you to my uh, fully secure website where you can shop around and have a look at all of our other fabulous kits. I want to thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on the next one.